considered. Gentleman's recognized. Today I rise in support of my amendment to H.R. 3221, the Student Financial Assistance and Fiscal Responsibility Act of 2009. Simply stated, a well-educated citizenry is the bedrock of democracy. H.R. 3221 will help to renew America's global leadership and education. The bill will accomplish this important goal by making college more accessible, reforming quality early education opportunities, and by strengthening community colleges and training programs to help build a highly skilled and innovative 21st century workforce that is ready for the rigors of a global economy. Study after study have validated the important role that early childhood education plays in a student's future educational success. U.S. Secretary of Health and Human Services Kathleen Sebelius recently testified before Congress, noting that, quote, too many children are entering school without the basic skills they need to succeed in kindergarten and beyond. The Secretary went on to say what many of us already know, quote, children who start off school behind their peers are more likely to stay behind throughout their school lives and into adulthood, meaning they never reach their full potential. As a representative of a rural district, I know all too well the myriad of challenges faced by our rural public schools, many of which are faced with the evolving responsibility of providing our children with a first-class education while operating on less than adequate resources. In light of these disparities and the critical nexus between quality early childhood education and future educational success, I believe that affirmative steps must be taken to ensure that all public schools, regardless of geographic location, receive equal treatment and federal education reform initiatives. To that, in to that end, the amendment I offer today would require that those states participating in the U.S. Department of Education's Quality Pathways Grant Program will evaluate and report to the Secretary of Education a description of any disparity by geographic area, rural and urban, that exists in ongoing high-quality early learning programs for low-income children. The amendment would also require that participating states outline the steps the state will take to address any such disparities. The Congressional Budget Office has determined that this amendment would have no direct effect on, on federal direct spending on revenues and thus would have no PAYGO impact. The key here is to do two things. First, to focus on the vital issue of early childhood development and education. And second, not to punish those rural areas where a disparity exists, but rather to reward those areas that have identified that problem and laid out a plan for moving forward. This is not about punishing, but about rewarding success, rewarding innovation, and moving forward, particularly in those crucial rural areas uh, where it's so important that our children, our young people, get these same opportunities. As a nation, we have a responsibility to ensure that all of our children have access to a high-quality education in the American dream. I urge my colleagues on both sides of the aisle to support this amendment and the underlying legislation so that we may move forward with our commitment to America's future. Uh, with that, I reserve the balance of my time. For what purpose does the gentleman from Kentucky rise? Madam Speaker, I rise to uh, claim time in opposition. I'm not opposed to the amendment. With that objection, the gentleman is recognized. Thank you. Uh, as I understand it, the purpose of this amendment is to ensure states applying for this new pre-K funding understand any geographic disparity between early learning programs for low-income children and consider steps to reduce the disparity. This amendment is a positive step. It may even move us closer to ensuring more low-income children are served by this program and something that's really not clearly uh, spelled out in the bill. I reserve my time. Gentleman reserves. Uh, gentleman from Virginia. I thank the gentleman for his remarks, and I yield to the gentleman from New Jersey. Gentleman's recognized. I thank my friend for yielding and express the committee's strong support for his well-thought-out amendment. The amendment reflects uh, embracing three principles. The first is deficit reduction, because the underlying bill reduces the deficit by $10 billion. The second is the value of quality, high-quality pre-kindergarten education for the children of this country. And the third is the principle of fairness, that the quality of a child's education should not depend on his or her zip code. And uh, what Mr. Pariello's amendment does is, that states, is to say that states who receive these early learning grants will have to pay attention to that fact, to discern any patterns of inequality that exist and talk about what they're going to do to fix them. We think that's a very important point, and uh, we commend Mr. Pariello for listening to people in his, in his district. I know he represents a lot of very small counties uh, and local subdivisions, but concerns as small. And by raising this amendment, he is raising the concerns of those constituents. The committee enthusiastically supports this amendment, and I yield back to Mr. Pariello. Gentleman from Kentucky. 
We yield back our time. Gentleman yields back. Gentleman 